Now that we have our template designed, we can go ahead and start creating our first actual useful service, the user service that's going to manage user accounts, uh, authentication, and so on. Let's get started by creating our new service using the template we created with the serverless create command. And now let's go open up our editor. Now with our editor open, we're gonna use the serverless create function command that was added for us by the Mocker serverless plugin. So we can create the bootstrap of our brand new uh, endpoint. Very basic function inside, and we should have our test created as well. And if we run Mocha, we should see the test pass. Great. Now, in order for us to create the user, let's go to our serverless.yaml file and set up the trigger that we need. I'm also just going to clean up these two functions that we don't need. Let's just delete them from as well. Don't need those in this uh, service. And here we're going to add the HTTP event to our create user function so that we have an endpoint when we deploy this to uh, AWS. What I have set up here is that the method will be a post, obviously, because this is a create user. And that's what you do with a REST API. I've set cores to true so that if we do have uh, requests coming from a browser, the cores uh, options uh, pre-flight requests will succeed. Um, and then I set the path here to v1 user. Normally, I like to preface this with a version number so that I have a way of potentially in future getting a completely different version of slash user. And then I can just name it v2 so that it doesn't impact existing APIs using the first version. With this event set up, we can now go to our create user function and continue developing there. And what we want to add here is the ability to receive body content from our post request and then push that into a DynamoDB table. Now that I've written the code, let's go take a quick look through what I've done. Essentially, what I've done is taken the event.body object passed to us by the post request and parsed it for JSON. Uh, we will take a look at validating this in a second. Um, I've now also extracted the username and password as those are the only two fields that I uh, require at this point for my, user, uh, my creation of a user. I have created the parameters to insert this into DynamoDB table here, assuming that I'm going to have an environment variable called DynamoDB user table, which we will fix in a second. And I've now passed my username and password. My username is my primary key in my DynamoDB table, and my password is the next field that I need to store. And then I just run through a try catch block, create a DynamoDB object using AWS DynamoDB document client. I then also uh, use put result to store the result of putting my new user into the DynamoDB table. And if successful, it's going to return a 201 with the correct headers. And if, it's, if it fails, it's going to return an error. 
And that's all we need for this function in order to create a new user. But we do want to take a look at setting some of the uh, validation for this. And for this, we are going to be using request syntax. To start with the create syntax, I need to look at my serverless.yaml file. And we are going to be adding some additional configuration here so that we have a way to define the schema of the post request that is passed to our uh, function. This is, a this is a great feature to use because it reduces the amount of work done in your Lambda function, makes more use of the features of API Gateway. So it essentially gives you more value for money uh, with, with your API Gateway request, but saving your money in your Lambda from having to do the validation itself and using up CPU cycles. And it's a very simple process to do this. First of all, let's go and add the configuration. All I've done here is I say I want a request to have a schema based on the application JSON content type, and this is the file that defines that schema. I'm going to take this uh, file name and actually create this, this path. So within source, and create a new folder called schema, and create a new file called create user request JSON. Within this file, I just need to set what that schema looks like. And yeah, I've got my completed JSON request object for the uh, user. Uh, all I need is a username and password to register a user. So these are the only two fields I have, and they're both required. And this is why doing validation in the Lambda function isn't really necessary because the, it, the request would never get past API Gateway if it didn't have all of my required fields. I can also specify restrictions on how I want the username and password uh, uh, values to look. Uh, I could have some more advanced pattern here for password, but for our purposes, this will be perfectly fine. Now with our schema in place, let's go ahead and create our DynamoDB table that's going to store the data for us. And to start off with, I'm going to create the uh, name of our table in the custom section of our serverless.yaml file so that we have a consistent single location that we are naming the table and we can use the same name across multiple different locations in our serverless.yaml file. What I've done here is I've created the user table based on uh, adding the service name itself in front of our user table name. Just, this is just a great way to namespace tables you make in an account, just in case you might need other services to have a user table for whatever reason. And then we also add the stage on so that we can uh, redeploy this exact same service in the same AWS account on multiple stages without there being any interaction or errors when it comes to creating the table. Now let's go ahead and create the table itself. Now that we have our table defined, it is just a regular DynamoDB table as defined here. I tend to like keeping a deletion policy of retain in case I accidentally remove the stack. My, da my data isn't necessarily going to vanish. The table will remain. And for the properties, I just have the name uh, as we defined it here in custom that is brought across. I also create my PK table, or my PK column. And because we don't have a sort or range column, I will keep, I don't need to add that here. We just have the PK column because all we're going to do is search on username. The last step we need to do before we can now deploy this into AWS is set up our IAM permissions. This will allow our, our uh, create user function to actually communicate with DynamoDB. Scrolling up, I'm going to move to this section here in my, in my service, the demo file, where it says I am role statements, and start adding my permissions for my DynamoDB table.
And as you can see here, we've added the permissions to allow uh, queries on the DynamoDB table, which we will be doing in a, in a second, and then put item as well, which is what we were doing in our function. And the resources we're linking to here, and this is where you'll see one of the plugins we installed becoming useful, is the pseudo parameters plugin. Instead of me worrying about how I'm going to extract the region that I'm deploying into, I can just use this uh, short syntax here to access the region, as well as my account ID. And just there's a typo there I need to fix. Then here I can again access the uh, name of my table. Typo. Uh, in the custom section, so I don't need to worry about uh, how I uh, how I make sure I maintain the consistency of that name. This this makes me realize now I've got a typo uh, uh, underneath. So I'm going to fix my table name typo. It should be self custom dot user table. Now with our service uh, set up, we've got a couple of things just to finish up before we can go ahead and deploy the service into AWS. So first of all, I'm gonna just change my service name here to be more appropriate, something other than service template. One thing we've got to do now as well is we need to go ahead and create this environment variable for our DynamoDB user table inside our serverless.yaml file uh, so that the environment variable is created in the context of our Lambda function uh, at deploy time. So when the Lambda function does execute, it can actually look at the environment variables and find the right one that it needs to fill in the, the user table here. So I'm just going to copy this uh, environment variable name and we're going to add this into the serverless.yaml file. There's an environment section that's commented out here. I'm just going to uncomment this and add our new environment variable. And to make sure that the name matches, I'm going to use the name from our custom variable that we created before. That would be this one here. And that's it. That's all we need to have our environment variable now set for our uh, Lambda function. Now on command line, I'm also going to link this service with my serverless uh, account so that I've got a way to help me debug and deploy my application into AWS. We do this by typing serverless on the command line. What this has done is check to see if we already have our service linked to a profile and uh, an organization and an app on the a serverless dashboard. It isn't, so it's asking if we want to enable this. I'm just going to say yes. Now I need to choose the organization that I wish to have this associated under. So I'm just going to choose Gareth McComsky. And it's now going to ask us to choose the app that I created before uh, that I want to have the service associated with. So I'm going to choose course. And that's it. My service is now associated with the correct org and uh, app that I wanted to, so I will now be able to deploy into AWS. Now with my link to my serverless account set up, I can go ahead and deploy. Now with our service successfully deployed, let's go take a look at what this looks like in our dashboard. In my dashboard, I'm now in the course app that we created before, and here is my user service, the dev environment that I created. And I'd like to go take a look at how I can test the endpoint that was created with my new user service. I'm going to click through to this dev instance in US East 1, and I can go to my subscription section here, which will give me the information I need about my new post request that I created. It gives me a very handy little call request here, so we can go ahead and test this out on our command line. Now back on our command line, let's use that call command we copied. And to this, I just need to add a few extra things. I'd like to add some data. And now I'm going to add a header for the content type. And one more option to make sure that I can see what the response is from my request. And now if I run it. And now that I've run this, you can see I get a 201, which means my user was successfully added because that is what we uh, coded in our Lambda function to return. So let's go take a look at our DynamoDB table to see the user that's been added. As you can see, our user has been added successfully, but you may have noticed my password is in clear text. So let's go make a quick change to our Lambda function to make sure that we store this password correctly. In order to encrypt our user password for security purposes, we need to add an additional uh, node library called bcrypt.js. 
There is another module called bcrypt that is a bit faster than bcrypt.js, but this requires compilation, which is tricky to do with Lambda functions since we have no control over the libraries available during deployment and execution time. So we're going to stick with using bcrypt.js. It does perform the exact same function. It's just a slightly bit slower. And to install that, we're going to use our npm command to install it. And then to make use of it inside our Lambda function, we just need to require it. And now we just need to encrypt the password that we have here with the bcrypt hash sync function. With our function now in place, let's redeploy and retest our endpoint. And now let's run our call request again with a slightly different username. The user has been created with our 201. Let's go take a look at the data in our table. As you can see, we now have a secured hashed password